every time we have an election, we have very nice sounding promises on what should be done to help seniors. Everyone should be able to take their money out of the CPF. Uh, people should get their payouts from the CPF much earlier. Uh, government should pay for healthcare costs, either by paying for MediShield premiums for everyone or some other ways of paying for healthcare costs. And it's not surprising that this comes up in elections, but I just want to explain that many of these measures will end up hurting the people they're trying to help. And let me just explain this briefly. In country after country, if you attempt to do away with a social security system where government takes responsibility and ensures that people have enough retirement savings and the savings will see them through their senior years, if we just leave it to individuals, what you find is that society becomes more divided and it becomes more unequal in the years when people are the most vulnerable, which is their older years. It happens in society after society. If you leave it to individuals to make decisions of their own, and each individual deciding how to invest their funds or spend their monies, we just end up with more inequality. It's happened abroad. In the United States today, because they've gone for a more market-based system, if you look at people in the bottom 20 to 30% of their population, they now enter retirement with negative net worth, which means that their debts exceed their savings. Negative net worth, no savings. Very serious situation. Same story in the other countries that have simply gone for liberalization. They face political pressures and they liberalize. Some countries like Denmark and Finland move towards providing earlier payouts from their social security system or their pension system and they're now trying to reverse cause. We must do what is in the interests of those who need help most, the lower income group and the middle income group. Provide flexibility and we've evolved the CPF system to provide a lot more flexibility. But understand the basic rationale of the CPF system of MediShield Life and a lot of our other schemes in the older years. The basic rationale is that we've got to take collective responsibility for each other. We cannot leave each other to fend for ourselves. We cannot say that everyone decides for themselves and somehow things are going to end up rosy. Some people will take care of themselves very well and in every society, the rich end up somehow being able to take care of themselves and doing better and the poor end up in tougher straits, in more difficult circumstances. We have to take collective responsibility for each other, and in the silver years, that is most important. We have to share risks. You don't know who's going to live longer than the others. You don't know who's going to have the misfortune of having a serious illness. And we don't know who's going to be at the wrong end of life's vicissitudes. But we've got to share risk together. And that's the whole aim of CPF life, Medici life, and now Cashy life. Plus, the government providing additional support to help those in the lower income group and the middle income group in their silver years, which is what we're doing. If you look at our significant subsidies for Medici life for the lower and middle income groups, if you look at the extra interest rate that we pay on CPF balances, particularly once you turn 55 and beyond, it's a very significant subsidy. It's not just about people making their own payments and contributions. The government is putting in significant additional support if you are lower income or lower middle income especially. Through CPF, through MediShield Life, and through now silver support, which comes out of our government budget. And silver support, as DPM Heng has announced, is going to be significantly enhanced starting from January next year, up to $900 every three months, which means $300 a month. So when you think of that system, it involves us taking collective responsibility, sharing risks and not saying every individual on their own. 
It also involves the government providing additional support for the poor and the middle income group. If you go instead for a system where the government simply pays for everyone, it has great appeal of simplicity, but it leads to greater inequality. Because if the government has to pay for everyone, it means the better off people get the same benefits as the poor. And it also means, and we've seen this in so many societies, that you end up with higher taxes on the middle income group. Yes, the rich can pay somewhat more taxes, but there's no way in which the sums will add up without also raising taxes significantly for the middle income group, which is the way it is in all the advanced countries that people sometimes think of as uh, some sort of dream society. Just look at the situation today. If you take the average Singaporean, the person, the median Singaporean, who's right at the middle of the income ladder, he or she pays about 2% income tax rate, 0 or 2%, and a GST rate. In the advanced countries, if you take the average, the income tax paid by that average person will be about 17 to 18%, and the GST rate, about 19 to 20%. When you add it all up, the average person in those advanced societies pays more than one third of their incomes to the government every month in taxes. More than one third. In fact, in the Scandinavian countries, it's well over 40%. So imagine in Singapore, our median income is $4,600. It'll mean that well over $1,000 a month will be paid to the government. So nothing is for free. When we talk about the government paying for everyone in healthcare or the government having to subsidize all manner of other social schemes, think not just about the fact that it's costs passed on to the government, but think about who's really paying. Everyone else is going to have to pay for it. And we have to think about the fairest system of taxes and payments.